Hello everyone. In the last part of the series, I want to show you how to use Substance Painter's Live Link to Unreal Engine 4. This allows us to stream textures in real time from Painter to Unreal Engine. So let's dive in and I'll show you how easy this is. So the first thing I wanted to do is show you what I had done in 3ds Max to get the reception desk prepared for Unreal Engine. What I ended up doing was attaching all of the different parts of the desk and tossing it all in one UV space. This is just going to make things a little quicker when texturing it in Substance Painter. This will prevent us having to have three different texture sets and also minimize the load on Unreal Engine. I also just tossed one material on the desk itself. So if we go over and I drop this, I just have one Corona material name reception desk. And then I just did a quick file export, export selected and exported it as an FBX. So once in Unreal Engine, we want to make sure that we have the Substance for UE4 plugin installed. What we first need to do is go to the Epic Launcher and under Library, there's Substance for Unreal Engine. We need to install this to Engine. If you click it, it'll ask you what version you'd like to install it to. I already have it installed, so we're good on that front. And then once in Unreal Engine, go up to the upper left and we're going to say Edit, Plugins. You'll see Substance for uh, UE4 here. We just click Enable and it'll ask to restart and that's all that's needed. Now to get our model in, all we need to do is simply drag in our little desk here. So this is the export FBX that I had, drag it on over, and then we can get it into our scene. Now, once in our scene, we want to first get a clean version of Substance Painter up and running. This is just going to be waiting for the information of the model to be sent over from Unreal Engine. So in order to do that, we need to find it in our content browser. Now, you can just click on the asset once dragged in. You can click on this little magnifying glass and it brings it up in the content browser in case you've got a lot of stuff uh, going on within Unreal Engine. But all we need to do is right click on the asset and say send to Substance Painter. We get this little dialog box that says an FBX can't be found. Uh, not to worry, we just click OK. And what it's asking us to do is to turn off collisions. So this will come on by default. We just check this off and clicks export. Now we're ready to jump over to Substance Painter and start texturing. It's crazy how easy uh, Substance Painter makes this on us. So if I click over here, bam, we've got our reception just, desk just ready to, to jump right in. Now, uh, we haven't baked any of the maps yet, so let's go ahead and do that real quick. I'm just going to do a, a quick 2K bake. Um, as I know, it'll happen really quickly here in real time for you guys. Now, a couple things I want to point out prior to texturing this asset is one, it shows on the very left corner of the screen dot. This shows us that we have a live connection with Unreal Engine. So anything that we do in Substance Painter is going to automatically be pushed over. Another thing I want to show you too is if we go into Plugins, DCC Live Link, then Configurator, we can then turn on and off the streaming so that's no longer live. Why would we want to do this? Now, if we're wanting to work on an asset and continue adding tons of layers and making a lot of changes, but we don't want to continually talking with Unreal Engine, we just want to spend some time on the asset. We can turn this off. It shows a little red dot in the corner like things have been paused which allows us to do our work. And then once we're done, we can jump back in, turn on the link and everything gets pushed to Unreal. So let's just dive right in and start texturing this asset. Now I wanna make it look close to what we had prior. So first thing we'll drop on is this antique bronze, kind of over the entire material. Let's add a couple repeats onto this and we'll turn down the height a little bit. So we'll go up to base color, I'll say height. Let's kind of bring this down a smidge. So we've got a little bit of that information there, but it's not too much. And then we turned off asperity. Okay, now I just want it on this portion of the model. So I'm gonna right click and say black mask. Let's turn this back to base color. And we'll say add a paint layer. We'll go to polyfill tool. And let's do this element mode on white. And if I just click on that guy, there you go. So the next thing was marble. Let me type that in here in our assets. M-A-R-B-L-E was this white marble. I'll drag that on. And let's go ahead and add a black mask. Say add paint, same deal. We'll keep it on element mode and we'll make sure it's on this kind of outside area of the desk. And then last was the beechwood, I believe. Yeah, beechwood mid brown. Drag that on, add a black mask, add a paint, element mode, white, put that on there. Okay, so let's adjust this. Actually, put those on too. Let's go ahead and add our few iterations on here, maybe three to four not 44, and height. Let's go ahead and turn this down because this is where a lot of the height information was in this material. Okay, again, we're not really gonna see this, but we just want this for GI. So I bring this back around. It's looking kind of cool already. 
Let's still go ahead and add the emissive underneath here. We do, again, we want to make sure that we have emissive channel turned on. So we just have one texture set. So it's just going to be turned on on this one. Again, we need to go up to our texture set settings. We click add and you're going to go down to emissive. Now I already had it turned on here. So if I turn this off, let's do it for you guys. And we'll see that emissive is right here. And let's go ahead and add another fill layer. We're going to turn off everything other than emissive. I'm going to make it pretty white. We'll make the emissive white. I'm going to go ahead and name this E-M-I-S-S-I-V-E. -E, just to kind of keep us organized. We'll delete that guy because he's not doing anything. And we'll add a black mask. Again, add a paint. I'm going to go to UV chunk fill mode here. And we'll just click on these little bottom areas. Pretty quickly, we can get this set up. There you go. And make sure it's not on this back area. So if you accidentally fill somewhere you don't want it to be, make sure it's black and you kind of just drag over parts that is. Okay, so that wasn't filled then. We are good. Now let's add some dirt or kind of some roughness grunge in here. Oh, actually we did get the top of the table. So again, we'll go back to our paint layer, go back to our polyfill, add a black and make sure we don't have the top. Okay, anything else get emissive on it? Doesn't look like it. Okay, so now let's do our grunge or kind of roughness here. So add another layer. Let's just name this grunge. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off everything. Now we'll keep uh, roughness, metal, and cut color, but we'll turn off normal, height, and emissive as we don't need those. The reason I left metal on is because I want this to be a dust, it's not metallic, but I want it to show up over the metal side of this table and not read as metallic. So we'll go up to base color. We're just gonna say multiply. I'm gonna turn this down to something kind of small. And then let's go ahead and add our black mask and we'll do our generator. And again, the generator I like is this mask builder. And real quickly, we're gonna see here it coming through. Let's go ahead and turn up our roughness a little more, just so we can see this mask kind of plugging through. And you kind of see it in the cracks already. Now again, just like we did in part four, hold alt, left click, we can see where this mask is. Let's go ahead and turn on triplanar in our generator settings. Now it kind of stacks that, so I'll leave that off. Let's go ahead and add another fill layer on top of this, which was the, the wipes that we had going on. So we'll go up to here and say add fill. Let's go to our grunges. Let's find that little wipes, this guy, the, the grunge wipe brushed. So we'll click and drag that over. And we need to set this on screen so that ends up blending with the generator we have below it. Cool. Let's see what that looks like in real time here. That's awesome. So let's jump over, actually turn back on the link. We'll jump over to Unreal and see what this looks like. Now, the cool thing is if something like this roughness, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a little too much. We can just jump back over to Painter, make our adjustments and push it over live. So what we'll do is we'll go back up to plugins, DCC live link, configure, we'll enable streaming. And it shows it here on the left. Again, the green dot shows that we're now connected to Unreal Engine. And one thing I did want to note is the texture that's being pushed or the resolution of the texture that's being pushed to Unreal Engine is controlled by the texture set settings resolution. So right now it's pushing at 2K. If we wanted to get it to something lower, you could drop it. If you wanted something higher, you can just choose the resolution that you want to get pushed to Unreal Engine. I think 2K is good for now. So let's jump over and we should see, there you go. Automatically it just pops everything over and connects everything up for us. Just that easy. It just works. It's crazy. So let's go ahead and take a look at this roughness here. It's looking a little bit like too rough. So again, this is kind of the cool thing about Substance Painter. See all this here, then the live link. I can just go back to the live link. Let's go to our grunge. Let's turn down the roughness so it's not too, too rough. If we take a look at that, okay. And then we'll jump back over to Unreal and that should just automatically update for us. Yeah, it's still looking a little too much. So let's go ahead and Drop it down just a bit more. Now let's see what that looks like in Unreal Engine. All right, looking pretty cool. Now one thing I did want to note is let's say you were working on this, needed to leave for work, come back the next day and finish everything out. The way to reestablish the link with Substance Painter on this particular asset, all we need to do is open up Substance Painter again, the saved file. Again, this gets saved in the project file of your Unreal Engine project. I'm gonna go ahead and save this now. Open up Substance Painter, and then you open up Unreal, go down to your content browser, find your mesh, just right click and say, send, send to Substance Painter. And that link just gets reestablished to the Substance Painter file that you have. It's just that easy.
This is how we can use Substance Painter's Live Link to Unreal Engine to quickly stream textures between Unreal and Painter to help reduce the time that we have going back and forth with exporting textures and getting them reconnected into Unreal Engine. I wanted to take a second to thank you all for watching my series on how to utilize the Substance programs in an architectural visualization workflow. We cover things like creating materials in Alchemist using photographs, blending source materials together, and even repurposed texture sets from our old texture libraries. We then used Substance Painter to texture two different assets, one with UVs, one without, and then touched upon Substance Painter's live link to Unreal Engine and how that can speed up your texturing workflow. I hope you all were able to learn something and you'll be back for more Substance content soon. With that being said, be well, and hopefully we'll see you in the next one.